Thanks for joining us on EMN5 today. We're going to talk about laundry detergent pod ingestions. And we've been seeing this a lot on the news lately, probably because there's been the first documented death now in August 2013. So why are kids at risk for ingesting or biting on these? Because they look like delicious candy, and they come in candy bowls. And the kids don't actually have to eat the whole thing. A lot of times we're seeing bad results just from them chewing on the outside. And that's because just touching the dry outside of the pod is pretty benign, but it comes in this water-soluble packaging, the polyvinyl alcohol. And kids' mouths are anything but dry, so it dissolves it pretty quickly. And what's inside the packaging, these surfactants, the detergents, they can cause pretty bad burns. And the propylene glycol, which metabolizes to lactic acid, can cause some severe metabolic disturbances. The pH of these pods is usually somewhere between 7 and 9, and the little packets themselves hold about 30 to 40 milliliters. So these were actually introduced in Europe over 10 years ago in 2001, and just arrived at the U.S. in 2011, so pretty recently, which means that some of our data is coming from the National Poisons Information Service in Europe. We've seen that most of the kids tend to eat them, then they also rub them in their eyes and then on their skin. So those are kind of the three exposures to think about. For kids that ingest them, a large amount of them have pretty immediate vomiting. Um, and the scary thing is that there's some other evidence here that they will aspirate a little bit. You can have a lot of coughing, um, even some strider. Kids will get burns, so the esophagus um, and pharynx, so you can get mucosal burns causing esophagitis, pharyngitis. And then this is the other scary part. We're also seeing some altered mental status with these ingestions. As far as skin exposure, a large amount of them will get some irritation and rash, and even a small amount can get some more severe chemical burns. Here's another example of a little baby with uh, some chemical burns after chewing on one of the pods. For eye exposure, you need to watch out for conjunctivitis. This happens in a lot of the kids, and they can even get a keratitis, which if you don't catch it and don't treat it correctly with good follow-up, can cause vision loss eventually. So this European study also noted two severe cases over about a year of data collection, in which case a kid was intubated because of severe oropharyngeal burns, and also one that had severe altered mental status with a GCS of about four. So this is just a review of the different things you might see. So as far as eyes, the conjunctivitis, keratitis, GI, you can get nausea, vomiting, mucosal burns. We talked about chemical burns and irritation for skin exposure. But the scary thing is in the U.S., we're starting to get more cases over the last couple of years where we're seeing some of these bad side effects, so some sudden altered mental status, usually within a couple hours. As far as this pulmonary, if they've had a little bit of aspiration, coughing, strider, bronchospasm, but also this progression to more of an ARDS-like picture. And then these metabolic disturbances with really high lactate and metabolic acidosis. So the U.S. has just published some case studies in 2013 from the emergency medicine world, and these are scary. These are cases where kids have been intubated pretty immediately, a lot of altered mental status, and the intubations have been due to not protecting airways, to strider, a lot of airway edema, some pulmonary infiltrates. And the scary thing is that all these kids have had this altered mental status. They've become untunded, unresponsive, lethargic, and all within a couple hours. A lot of these intubations took place either in the field by paramedics or within a couple hours in the ER. So this is scary. And like I said, there's also now been documented the first death in August 2013 attributed to a detergent pot ingestion. And so why are we seeing these possibly more severe cases in the U.S. I mean, this is new, so it's just coming through, but we're, we think we're seeing more severe cases. One of the ideas been mentioned so far is that the non-ionic detergents have a higher concentration in the U.S. compared to the U.K. Maybe that's why they've been more severe. We're not sure yet. This is pretty new. But the key point here is watch out for this. Even if the kid's just been chewing on the corner, has a little bit of bubbles in their mouth, watch out for altered mental status within a couple hours. Watch out for coughing, vomiting. Watch out for kind of an ARDS-like process. Listen to their lungs. Make sure they don't have crackles. Think about airway protection early if you think they might have some mucosal burns or you hear strider, evidence of airway edema. And also look out for a metabolic acidosis. If the kid has more of just a skin or eye exposure, make sure you do a good exam. Do a fluorescein exam for their eyes. Make sure they don't have keratitis. Have them follow up with the appropriate ophthalmologist if they do have some evidence of um, conjunctivitis or keratitis from the exposure. So watch out for detergent pods. Remember these things. Um, and here's the references. Thanks for joining us on EMN5.